Every protein appears only once. We can discuss it later why that is, of course, totally illogical. Um, but then we take, we took the cyclically related genes as C genes, and then we looked uh, which of those uh, 300 RAS related genes is actually in close contact in such a protein protein interaction module. And there was only one protein, NADPH oxidase 5. That's a um, reactive oxygen generating enzyme. There are unfortunately gazillion methods to construct these protein protein interaction modules. And uh, yeah, people bitch about which one is, is the best. Um, so in this case, we used two other ones. Um, basically, where you preform the modules or where you use, use the shortest distance and so forth. All three models resulted in the same protein as the closest neighbor of the cyclogenes. So actually, from those eight pathways, we only used these two little subsections to form this little protein protein damage network, and that is our module. For those diseases, forget all the rest. There may have been disease function in another disease, but not here. So now we have a clear set of targets that we work with. For validation, um, NOx5 is a gene that's not present in mice and, uh, and rats, so it's completely understudied, uh, at least in animal models, so we had to generate a knockout mouse. If you remember, hypertension is one of the phenotypes in that disease cluster that we worked on, and the mice were severely hypertensive, and the mechanism uh, was indeed through affecting acetylcholine induced nitric oxide cycling GMP dependent vasodilatation. So not only was the phenotype there, the mechanism was the same as predicted from the module. Now, uh, to validate this clinically, of course, we do not think that all patients with hypertension will have this mechanism. That would be naive. It will only be a certain pizza slice of this patient. The other patients with hypertension may actually need no treatment. Only 10% of patients with hypertension get a myocardial infarction or stroke, or they will need a different treatment. So we need to find out, uh, pick out the patient. This is the module. We have drugs with which we can uh, treat it. And then, of course, we need a diagnostic um, that picks out those patients who have this mechanism and treat the only those patients with drugs correcting these, this pathway. So then we have precision medicine. We identify only the green ones. We treat only the green ones. The others, as I said, will either need no treatment or a different treatment. But that's precision medicine. And we don't call the disease hypertension anymore. We call the disease after this dysregulated module. This is uh, how the essay works for the clinical trial. It will start at uh, Kaolinska, uh, probably early next year. So this is this marker protein, um, the distribution in normal tensive patients. And in hypertensive patients, uh, most have also fairly normal levels. But there is clearly a subgroup of patients which stands out. And those are the ones which will be true. And we think only those biomarkers are relevant that show such a bimodal distribution. Look at other biomarkers that we use in the moment. Blood pressure is homogeneously distributed. And we arbitrarily set 130 healthy disease. Why not 129? Why not 128? Or cholesterol levels? Monophasic distribution in the population. We arbitrarily set uh, uh, disease markers. You know? The relevant biomarkers will all show this bimodal distribution. Another uh, phenotype in this uh, is heart failure, and a uh, particular problem is heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. So, from the biophysical parameters, the patient actually has a normal heart function at least with these parameters. Um, 
So indeed, we also found a subgroup of patients that have elevated NOx5 levels, but then we went one step further, it was also a little bit later in our development, uh, we wondered what about this, the, the downstream signaling part, which